Here we go, nation. We're going to talk about the legacy of Testament. Who they are, what their albums are like, why in the world they were called the legacy. <laughs> no. We're not going to talk about that last part. I find it actually more so ironic that uh, we have to examine the legacy of Testament, considering Legacy was their original name. They also had the efforts of Steve Souza in their band at one point in time before the recording uh, of the album that we're talking about today, their debut album, The Legacy. Uh, he, of course, left to become a member of Exodus, and Chuck Billy came on board. He was a member of a local band called Guilt, which is kind of interesting to me, considering there was a local band around here named Guilt a number of years ago that actually had one of my very good friends at lead vocals and uh, guitars. Now, it wasn't a thrash metal band, but who are we to judge? So let's talk about these guys. Let's talk a little bit about the legacy of Testament, and, and not the album, but the legacy of the band themselves. I mean, these guys, during the latter part of the 1980s, first part of the 1990s, they were definitely hot property. Not to mention, it was the fact that all of Thrash was definitely hot property, not only just in the metal universe, but in the music universe. This was very, very important. Uh, this was a very important subgenre of music at the time, and this was certainly one that uh, seemed to be, and have a very rich future, not to mention there was a rich underground that was all starting to become exposed. Whenever you consider the myriad of names that was uh, really associated with thrash metal at this time frame, and we're not even talking about the ones that are even still around, man, there's definitely a lot that we can talk about. But Testament was one that always kind of, stuck, uh, <clears throat> kind of stood out like a sore thumb. You can almost say that these guys were the leaders of the second wave of thrash metal. If there was a second wave, you know, Big Four, Testament would definitely have to be a part of it, and some people would even say that Testament belongs on the original Big Four, but then that involves discussions that just don't need to happen, because there's just way too much convolution that occurs. So let's talk about this original album, let's talk about The Legacy, an album that as of 1991 sold over 150,000 copies, wow, try saying that about an album uh, of this variety, and really whenever we talk about it, of kind of this recording stature in these days. In these days, that's something that definitely wouldn't happen. It's something where if you sell 1,500 copies of your album on release week, you're probably pretty happy. But that's you know, it's the difference of you know not pirating music and all those other things and you know music actually being relevant. So whenever The Legacy came out, this was something where Thrash was already on the scene. It was definitely speeding its way into the hearts of uh, many metal fans in America and definitely abroad. So this was a broad spectrum, you know, real cultural overhaul that happened and originated in various locations of the globe. You can't say it just originated in America because it sure as hell didn't. And whenever The Legacy came out, this was certainly one that had a rough and rugged underground sound to it. The production definitely was not the greatest, but hey, these were a ragtag group of guys that were just starting out, that were just getting their feet wet in this whole game, and it was certainly one uh, where it really seemed that they had the best individuals in mind and the best individuals at their disposal in order for them to be uh, the tightest band potentially uh, imaginable at this period of their career. And the one thing, the one trump card that this band has had for uh, many albums, including right now uh, during their current run, their revival run, if you really want to call it that, is the presence of Alex Skolnick as their uh, guitar player. I mean, Alex is just one of these absolute beasts at the guitar strap that just absolutely is able to shred his way through anything. It doesn't matter how fast the song is, he's even able to really slow things down, soften it up, go very, very melodic. Hell, he even had a, a jazz trio where he was able to take old songs from other bands and give it a nice little jazz and slash blues overhaul, which is really, really cool. If you have never heard any of this stuff, uh, look up the Alex Skolnick Trio, and you'll definitely get a little bit of an eye-opening experience into just how good uh, Alex Skolnick really is, not to mention how diverse he really is. Now, whenever we talk about this album, I mean, we're talking a nine-track standard affair issue from the uh, 1980s. This is something where it does not necessarily have to be that long. This is a wham-bam, thank you, ma'am, or sir affair uh, that doesn't clock in any longer than 37 minutes in total length. But those 37 minutes are packed shit tight, full of fucking riffs. And not to mention, this is one where it just doesn't feel at all like Testament ever took their foot and removed it from the accelerator button on their musical vehicle, if you really want to go with that metaphor. This is something that just thrashes along from the very first moment of Over the Wall all the way to the ending of Apocalyptic City with minor pauses and deviations, mainly just for style points, and mainly just giving Skolnick the opportunity to give them one hell of a hottie lead. Not to mention also showcase the fact that they do have diversity. They don't just need to thrash as fast as humanly possible in order 
order to be a good band. They're also able to kind of take a little chill pill and add a little bit of melody in there. Usually, though, just to introduce a song, because at this point in time, Chuck Billy is just willing to thrash his fucking throat off, not to mention emit some of the most perilous screams that you're going to hear out of the second half of the 1980s. This album has a lot of great material on it. Whenever you consider some of the titles that are on this record, some people may actually look at it and scratch their head a little bit. Maybe perhaps they remember a little bit more from albums such as The New Order or Practice What You Preach, you know, albums of that regard. But whenever you look at the legacy, damn, look at this. Over the Wall is something that they included on a rising metal cassette tape from the 1980s, along with such bands such as Heathen and Overkill. And this is the one song that they chose, and it's... A Darn good choice, because it really showcases what thrash metal uh, testament style is really all about. But then you also have songs such as Burnt Offering, C-O-T-L-O-D, which is uh, Curse of the Legions of Death, which just has one of those freaking choruses, those very, very powerful choral-style choruses where everybody is shouting their lungs out and loving everything. First Strike is Deadly is in the same realm Alone in the Dark is a great track. Apocalyptic City is fantastic. Not to mention was the basis of a future live album, Return to the Apocalyptic City. Really, whenever you look at this material, there's nothing that stands out as a negative. There's nothing that stands out as really a weak strand on the chain. Really, the weak strand on the chain is something that couldn't even be controlled for that time. And something that really shouldn't be that much held against Testament, at least in this regard. Because remember, at this point in time, Testament is still uh, small potatoes as a band. They're still a group that doesn't have that much in the way of financial legs. They're still a band that's not that much, you know, really well swum into the system of uh, the music universe and, and, and the music uh, industry. So really the production is the only thing that seems to have a real negative cutback uh, on this album. And it's just simply because everything seems a little bit you know, really down-tuned. Everything sounds a little bit distant at times, but whenever Alex is able to shine through with a solo, especially with a lot of higher register moments, damn, it really illuminates itself. And you know what? That dirty and disgusting and kind of distant image, man, does it give you one hell of a eerie experience whenever you listen to it through a good pair of headphones and you're able to enhance it as much as you can because, well, then it doesn't matter how distant everything sounds. It still sounds like it's thrashing you literally five feet away from you. I love this album. I love this debut. I love the fact that in the 1980s, there were little parental advisories that were on the backside of the CDs or of the records or the cassettes. I, I love that shit because, you know what, before Tipper Gore came in and, you know, called for it to be right there on the front and everything is this and that and metal is terrible and rap objectifies women, you had this little thing on the back that said, uh, you know, explicit lyrics or, you know, some some sort of lyrical thing, parental advisor, is a small, tiny little thing. If you wonk, you missed it. And that's the way that it should be. There should be a warning that's back there, and if you look at it and you see it, then you should understand that it's there. But if you miss it, then it's your own damn fault for being a moron. And plus, I find them to be kind of a vintage little, little playful uh, trife about how the 1980s were kind of going and where we were going to be heading in the first part of the 1990s. I love the fact that this album got one of those, even though I don't know if there was even a single swear uttered in this album. I think it was just because of the imagery, and let me tell you something, imagery is imagery regardless. You know, you take a listen to some pop and, you know, you know, especially some old blues stuff, and you'll realize that the imagery on that is uh, worse than the imagery on this. Yeah, uh, Satan isn't the only thing that's disgusting. Um, 1980s America, now I'm talking to the past, that's just terrible. But at any rate, this is a brilliant debut by Testament. This is definitely one that put them on the map and definitely gave them every reason and excuse to become bigger. And because of this, they were able to, you know, really enhance their writing style a little bit. But we, of course, had to recognize that a lot of bands, after a really, really furious debut, sometimes hiccup a little bit with the sophomore album. Now, we've seen where that has not been the case with acts such as Metallica, whose Ride the Lightning album could very well be my favorite album of theirs. But... Let's see with Testament. Let's move forward. Let's see if Testament is able to keep this ride going and continue to perpetuate themselves as one of the most important second wave thrash bands in history. 